All right, so our T table is different than our standard normal because the T changes depending on the sample size. As we said, bigger sample size, smaller tails, closer to the standard normal. So we need a way to talk about how much uh, information we have, and that's what we call our degree of freedom. So in this particular context, we're going to be using a degree of freedom of n minus 1. Because essentially the reasoning is that we are estimating, uh, the, using the estimate of the mean, so we're losing some information. Okay, so set up with the table, standard normal, all your z-scores are on the outside, and you've got your z-scores, your probabilities in the middle. T-scores are set up differently. They have probabilities along the top, uh, confidence levels along the bottom, and then you have your degrees of freedom where all your T-scores are actually in the middle. So set up exactly opposite of our normal distribution. But we've already been using this T-table, so for now it'll be pretty straightforward because for the confidence intervals it's a lot easier. Um, it is right-tailed as opposed to left-tailed. This doesn't matter for us with the confidence intervals, but it will matter when we get to hypothesis testing and finding those p-values. Um, they only bother to give you half. We could do this with the standard normal, but for some reason they always give that with both. But they only give you half of this uh, because it's symmetric and you can always figure out the other side. So let's go ahead and do some of these. We're gonna, some of them are a little more complicated than what we'll need mainly because I want us to get used to the chart. So for all of these, we're going to figure out our t-score. So the first one says we want a probability of 0 0.01 to the right of it with 12 degrees of freedom, or degree of freedom equal to 12. So if we drew our picture, this says our probability is to the right, and we're looking for the t that would give us that. That's exactly what our t-table is set up for. So let's go to our t-table, which you should all have because we've been using that one to find our confidence, um, our critical values traditionally for part six. So in this case, we have a degree of freedom here on this right side, our left side. So we're going to a degree of freedom of 12. We want our upper tail probability, right, which is exactly what we're looking for to be 0 0.01. And we're just going to go ahead and figure out where those two things intersect. So 0.2681. Did I say 0 0.26? 2.681. You'll notice that they're fairly similar to our z-scores in terms of like the magnitude of them, which is why I knew when I said 0.2 I was being bananas that it was supposed to be around uh, 2. Okay. Next one says the t-score that has a probability of 0.95 to the left of it. So now if we're drawing our curve, still centered at zero, all that good stuff. Uh, 0.95 is to the left side. So we're going to come shade most of the curve, probably even further than that. That's the left. Um, and we're looking for this t-score. And then this one we need to do a little bit of work. They gave us the sample size. And we know degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1, which is 30 minus 1, or 29. So we're going to look for 29. We don't want to do 0.95 because this doesn't have 0.95. We're going to look for 0 0.05 to the right. So back to, oops, that is not where my table is. <laughs> uh, back to my table. We're looking now for a degree of freedom of 29. Upper tail probability was just 0 0.05 because the lower side was 0 0.95. And we end up with 1.699. This time I said that correctly. Come on. 1.699. All right. Now here's the piece that we care about because we're in confidence in of a land. We don't necessarily care about probabilities to the left and right. We want to be able to find a t-score that we'd use for a 95% confidence interval, 99% confidence interval. So these are even easier. We don't have to think about the drawing at all because that's that bottom row. The only work we need to do is to figure out our degree of freedom so that we can pull this from the right row of our table. So 95% confidence, df of 14. 
All right, so now we're looking DF of 14, 95% confidence, and again, just where those two things intersect. So 2.145. All right, last one. If you tried this on your own, you probably realized you needed my help because we need a degree of freedom of 50 minus one, which is 49. And if you go to your table, you're not gonna find that. Your table is somewhat limited in the fact that there's a heck of a lot of degrees of freedom and, and information here in the T distribution. So the mistake here would be to use 50 because 50 is the closest thing to 49. But what's going to happen if you use 50, was this a 99? I'm going to pretend this is 99%, is that you'd use 2.678. But in reality, we have less information than that. So your T should be something a little bit bigger, right? It should be something slightly bigger than 2.678. Uh, so what you should always do for the T distribution, so that way you're not like lying about how narrow your interval is, is you should always round down. So if we are looking for 49 and it's not on our table, we're gonna actually use 40. Because then I'm gonna make my uh, distribution a little big, or my confidence interval a little wider than it should actually be, but I know for a fact that I'm not lying about how what, what the actual interval is. That no matter what, I've contained the real interval within this interval. So point Two or two point seven zero four is what we should be using for our T star here. All right. So that's finding T store T scores or critical values that we're going to use in this confidence and book calculation.